each one of you has a copy of the scriptures. And if you don't, we'll just turn in your Bible to Ecclesiastes chapter 11, and we'll get our text from there. Made it simple today. I just took one place in the scripture and kept it that way. It won't be bouncing around, but keep it handy because we're going to be referencing these verses. The passage entitled, For the Tree Falleth, There It Shall Be. Well, have you back? Somebody lost their paper. Tommy did. Okay. Let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 3. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree falleth toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. The tree doesn't unfall. It falls, it falls. Verse 4. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. You worry about whether the, the weather, the wind, you won't have a crop. He that regard the clouds shall not reap. If you worry about the rain, don't plant anything, you won't have anything. As I knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is the child. Even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In the morning sow thy seed, in the evening withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whither shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Truly the light is sweet, and the pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years, and rejoice in them all, and yet let them remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh Vanity. Rejoice, O young man, and thy youth. Let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Walk in the ways of thine heart. Do what you want to do. And in the sight of thine eyes, but know thou, for all these things God shall bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart, Put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Do some the same as, as youth, don't you? The story before again, I shared with, with Kevin over here a moment ago. I started pulling the bulletin today. <coughs> I have a habit of reading the obit page myself, but this article was about a man that read the obit page. And his friends decided that pull a trick on him. His name was Fred. His friends took and mailed in Fred's picture, a little biography about him, and the fact they announced that he died. But he picks up the paper the next morning. Sees his picture there, name, all about him. And he runs to the phone and calls his buddy. He said, man, said you seen this morning paper? He said, go get it. He said, whose picture you see there and, and, and whose name do you see? Well, that's you, Fred. So, where are you calling from? <laughs> hey, wait. Couldn't resist. <laughs> All right. Where the tree falleth, 
Lord used King Solomon in many ways, but here he used him to give us this bit of wisdom. And I'm going to tell you in the beginning, this message is not about trees. God used this illustration about a tree to teach us about life. Folks, that's what this message is about, is about life. I had a couple of close first cousins. They were like brothers to me that I've lost in the last five years. Both of them brothers. They were log haulers by trade. I grew up in a sawmill. My grandfather ran the, the rails and uh, I took care of those or they were log trains to travel on. So logging was a part of our life. But these two men, brothers, they cut huge trees for a living. In fact, they'd take the largest one they could find. Of course, they made more money off those logs. But in the process of being log, log haulers, they learned how to cut trees. They could cut trees and make them fall wherever they would. They knew how to cut those things. And uh, every now and then, they'd get careless because they were used to doing it all the time. And, that have an accident, want to be hurt. Uh, and they both had injuries over the years. In making those trees fall the direction they wanted. Well, life's this way. This message again is about life and the end of life. And God gives life to all, us all. <coughs> Look again at verse 5. As I know us not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, the woman that's pregnant. Even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. Nothing was made but by him. He made all things, did he not? But when you look at life, whatever we do, our actions are permanent. Whatever we do is permanent. Can you think back 24 hours ago on what you did yesterday? What you did yesterday is It is permanently, permanently recorded in your life's book. You can't change anything, can you? It is totally impossible to alter one bit about it. this morning earlier, isn't it? Can't change it. Therefore, we need to get it right the first time. Would you all agree? Especially when we're dealing with the eternal souls of mankind. We need to get it right. We live in a day of videos, recordings. Just this week, Brother James wanted out to me if I go to YouTube and I check my message and I realize I haven't had a haircut lately. <laughs> Somebody need to tell me I need to go get my hair cut. But if I, I saw that video and things are as they are. I won't change a bit. In fact, I couldn't edit out, could I? In fact, my hair didn't cut. Uh, she got it cut this week. Millie's had to leave. She got a shower going, but she was here earlier. I wanted to see her. But 
that in our day, the media is in a furor over taping our president. The, his lawyer, Comey, has pulled out some recordings he's made, a taping he's made of him in the past. Uh, but I, I get amused a lot of times, especially these politicians. Uh, someone will hit them up, well, you said so-and-so, and he said, I didn't say that, and they'll pull a tape <laughs> or a video. Folks, if you think about that, we all need to be careful at all times what we say or do because it's permanently again recorded, is it not? No one can change the past, can they? Or is it? I used to have a radio program in Lufkin, Texas. This is what I recorded recorded my message on. I would drive I lived in Nagadoches. Pastor the church in Dyball and of course went through Lufkin. I had the option of going to the studio and live bringing my message or pretty soon I learned I could take these old real tapes. Mm -hmm and take my message and drop it off and listen to myself as I was driving to church on Sunday morning. Every now and then I'd listen to myself, I'd make a grammatical error or something. I still do that occasionally. Say something I didn't like and then I realized that hey, there gotta be a way. This thing got little numbers on it. And I would take this thing and I'd look and I said, where did I say this? And I could edit it, uh, say something that was more correct or whatever to my choosing. I had the option of changing what I had to say. But I'd go up to the radio station on Saturday afternoon, drop off a little tape, y'all play that. And then I'd listen to it. But the good part about it, I could change what I said before everyone else heard it. I could edit. Now, folks, why I said all that, you can't edit live. What you've done is done. If it was bad, don't do it again. <laughs> Amen. If it was a mistake, don't make the same mistake again. Life is far too short to continue away from God. That's why James said that life is but a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanishes away. When you compare eternity and our current life, there is no comparison. But with the eyes of God, on the scene, truth is irrevocable, cannot be edited. You wouldn't want to edit truth, would you? Whatever you do, God 
sickness yet, doesn't he? You might fool yourself sometimes, but you can't fool God. Sometimes we try to fool ourselves, do we not? Oh. There is no purgatory. Amen. I know that there's how many Catholics today? A billion? Perhaps? Worldwide? And they're taught there is a purgatory. And I'm persuaded that if there was such, God would have told us in His Word. People do lie about the truth and about God's Word. But there's no place It's an either or thing, isn't it? Either you know the Lord or you don't. Where the tree falleth, where the tree falleth, that's going to be. Said if it fell toward the south or if it fell toward the north. In fact, that's how I hurt my hand, by the way. Here back in March, my brother had a cabin up in the woods there. Some fellows had cut a huge pine tree down and it fell, been laying there now for two years. And I, we decided we'd cut it up in sections, burn it. That's what I got. But look, the tree had been laying there. But think about it a moment. You can't unfall a tree. You can't unfall one. Thanksgiving Day of 1982, a little town called Ratcliffe, Texas. My brother and I were deer hunting together. He was about a mile down the way and I'm up in the tree before day leaning against a 308 rifle like so. And I said to myself when I built that stand I need to put some more nails in that stand so I had a little flannel shirt on had some nails in my pocket. But all of a sudden, I heard something get, and I'm laying on the ground having a bad dream with a broke back. Can't move, can't walk. And I couldn't unfall. I fell. I can't. You can't unfall, folks. Once you do it. But I hadn't been back there hunting, folks. I quit. <laughs> 36 years ago. Dang. The Lord allowed me to walk again, and I'm going to walk for Him <laughs> best I can. The part I want you to understand is you can't unfall something. Whether the tree falleth, if a person leaves this life with the Lord, that's where He's at. If he leaves without the Lord, that's problematic. The beautiful part about it, we get to choose where the tree falls. As I mentioned about my cousins cutting the tree and making them fall the way. Oh, that's what you do in this life. Make sure that tree's going to fall in the right direction. And through our Lord, He can. But in verse 9, we read about the judgment day. 
Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart. And in the sight of thine eyes. Whatever you do. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. It's pointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. There's two judgments in the Bible. The first judgment we want to be in, it's called the judgment seat of Christ. The Lord's going to judge, bring us all together, and He's going to reward us as our works have been. Not in order to be saved or not to be saved, but He's going to reward us. But unfortunately, after the thousand years of drove the Bible tells us about the great white throne judgment. You don't want to be there. It's called the second death. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such a second death hath no power. Amen. Folks, you don't want to hear the one on the throne say, Depart from me, I never knew you, ye that work iniquity, and cast into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it's a forever thing, my friend. You can't afford to leave this life without making sure that tree's going to fall in the direction of the Lord. It will fall. I'm making things right with Him, you get to control. The Lord made us a free moral agent. And we get to choose Him, don't we? Oh, we got the best deal on earth. He's already paid the price. Pay. Before we got here, the price of our sins was already paid. All we have to do is claim it. We're kind of spoiled, aren't we? But that's how simple it is. Either you claim it or you don't. 